Selling bank-owned properties stinks. When real estate agents find out that I sold REOs, the next question I'm asked is, how can they get REO listings? My advice is to save your dignity and sanity and don't bother. Selling REOs, you will see every facet of the ugliest side of real estate sales. I mean, dealing with degenerative people, filthy houses, physical danger, arguments, threats, court appearances, neglect, desperation, and crappy commissions to boot. First, let me clarify the terminology. Bank-owned real estate is called real estate owned, or REO for short. So, saying REO is synonymous with bank-owned property. Banks take ownership of real estate when a property goes into foreclosure, then a trustee sale, which is the courthouse auction, but it only becomes an REO if no one buys it at the trustee sale. This happens when the minimum bid is too high, and so no one bids. Property ownership then reverts back to the bank that had the mortgage and foreclosed. Banks need to liquidate these assets and they are listed for sale by real estate brokerages, and that is basically how REOs come to be. The amount of REOs exploded in the years following the 2008 financial crisis. Real estate agents largely had direct relationships with lenders that needed to sell these assets. Also, commissions to sell REOs were higher back then, but that changed fairly quickly. Most mortgage banks use mortgage servicers. Mortgage servicers are separate companies that oversee monthly mortgage payment collection and effectively act as the intermediary between the borrower and the bank to manage the mortgage relationship. Naturally, servicers were in charge of overseeing the sale of the REO and assignment of the listing. Now, I'm not trying to bore you with the mortgage background, but it's worth knowing a little how REOs work so I can explain why they're no good. So basically, mortgage servicers are where you will build a relationship to get an assignment. I remember when I got my first assignment, I was so excited I could hardly sleep the night before. I loved selling real estate and felt honored a lender chose me to market and sell their asset. I pledged to do the absolute best job, and I did. I always did the absolute best job to my very last assignment, but the people that assign listings don't care if you do a good job. My enthusiasm to start on my first assignment mirrored my enthusiasm to never do another REO at the end. REOs are a lot of work that last anywhere from months to over a year. It all starts when you first get an assignment. You drive to some property and have to determine whether or not it's vacant or occupied. This consists of pictures and a report. You basically have to be a prowler around someone's house. Yes, the police get called on you from time to time. You also wonder, will some nutcase inside the house shoot me? I've almost been attacked several times and had multiple people scream in my face while I was taking required pictures. Vacant homes must be rekeyed. This means you enter a home with a locksmith who has picked the lock. More pictures need to be taken and personal property reports must be filled out. Cleaning, repairs, and other services need to be ordered. You will need to do a BPO or broker price opinion, which takes hours to complete. Now, keep in mind, all these inspections and reports are done by the agent for free. I say free because if something comes up, like a dispute between the borrower and the bank, or legal action, or the REO gets transferred to another agent, or another servicer, then boom, it vanishes and you get nothing. That does happen, it's not rare. It happened to me multiple times. Now, if you do make it to the end, you get a paltry commission. A listing commission of 1.75% for vacant properties and 1% for occupied properties. And you always have to offer 
1% to the buyer's agent, which pisses everyone off. So you get calls from outraged agents that tell you they will never show your listing. But that's all the commission banks pay, right? Wrong. Banks pay 6%, but the servicer pockets the difference. That's right. They assign you some dumpster fire asset and then pocket everything after agents are paid. So, for example, if the property was occupied, the total commission for both agents is 2% and the servicer pockets 4%. Oh, and they deduct a technology fee from your tiny commission. Are you starting to see why working for months without even a guarantee for a small commission just might get tiring? These mortgage servicers sell their assets through an online bidding portal, which they ostensibly claim is a more transparent process, but that is nonsense. Never will you invest more time into real estate work to have the rug pulled out under you. As if inspecting and working with dirty, dangerous houses wasn't bad enough, the people you communicate with are terrible. Yes, I'm talking about everyone. The asset managers treat you with contempt. Other agents are angry and rake you over the coals because they are frustrated with the offer submission system. The occupants are almost always entitled and mean-spirited. Keep in mind, many of these people have not paid a mortgage payment for years. In two of my listings, a whopping nine years with no mortgage payments. One was a public employee and I could see his compensation online and he made big money. I'm talking 1% or salary. That wasn't unusual either. I'd go to homes that hadn't paid a mortgage for years and see luxury cars in the driveway. They're also the ones that want an absurd cash offer to voluntarily vacate. Actually, virtually every occupant wanted a fat bribe to move out of a home they didn't even own. Of course, even when they do vacate, or the property is found vacant, squatters might move into your listing. There are opportunistic criminals that occupy vacant properties because it takes at least several months to remove them in California. I'm not talking about homeless people. I mean, we did have them too. But I mean there are regular functional people that illegally occupy properties. I have endless stories about selling REOs and they aren't pretty, but let me assure you, there are countless other ways to earn a commission in real estate. When it comes to REOs, just don't bother.